This is KGW News at 11. This is a situation that will not last for weeks. This will last for months uh, and potentially a lot of months. Now at 11, Oregon lawmakers paint a bleak picture amid the coronavirus pandemic. They're worried about economic struggles and the state's quickly depleting medical supplies. State officials say we have 75 cases in Oregon with three total deaths now. Both of the patients who died recently had underlying medical conditions. Washington has had 66 deaths among almost 1,200 cases. Governor Inslee also announced a 30-day statewide moratorium on evictions for people who can't pay rent right now. Portland is now also considering a shelter-in-place order. It is not in effect, but something city leadership says could happen. The Willamette Week reports the policy is in the draft stages. If it happens, residents will be ordered to stay home except for specific trips. And those include trips for workers at businesses deemed essential by the city, as well as visits to grocery stores. Several counties in the San Francisco area put restrictions like this in place earlier this week. On the topic of a shelter in place order, today we asked officials with OHSU and the Oregon Health Authority about such an order for Portland and the state. It's a decision that isn't taken lightly, but at this time, um, we would be supportive of that measure if the governor chose to move in that direction because facing the type of surge in need for hospital capacity, including ICU beds and ventilators, we want to make sure that we will be able to deliver upon the care that the citizens of Oregon need. And facing this concern, we would absolutely be supportive if the governor's office made this determination. OHA did not recommend the shelter in place order at this time. Again, this is not something that is in effect, but it's being considered. Providence hospitals announced today they're ready to start testing for COVID-19 in Oregon. Providence will be able to process 500 to 600 patient tests a day, seven days a week. It says it will collect tests from its eight hospitals in Oregon. Results are expected 24 hours after receiving the sample. However, in order to be tested, a doctor has to give a referral. These are not available to the general public. Oregon is also ramping up testing in other ways. Governor Kate Brown announced an agreement with a private lab for 20,000 more tests. She says the first batch of 5,000 will arrive any day and will be distributed as quickly as possible. Our testing capacity is expanding, but it will be gradual. But Every Oregonian won't be able to be tested immediately. Officials are also setting up an emergency hospital at the state fairgrounds in Salem. It should be up and running by Friday. The governor also ordered all health care providers to stop non-emergency procedures in order to conserve health care equipment around the state. Now, this order covers hospitals, outpatient clinics, veterinarians and dentists. Lawmakers in Salem put aside their recent differences and met to see how they can help the state get through the virus crisis. They heard mostly grim news. Pat Doris reports. Carefully spaced out to reduce their chances of infection, Oregon lawmakers hoping to harness state resources listen to a litany of bad news. COVID-19 is hammering the state's people, its economy, and its medical equipment stockpile. First, the governor's chief of staff. In short, we believe that general fund tax receipts will drop significantly. So today, I am sounding the alarm. Our needs will far outweigh our resources. And until we have a better picture of the situation, we need to be extremely careful with state finances. Legislator and family doctor Elizabeth Steiner Hayward worries about businesses and workers. I mean, when you have an organization like McMinimins lay off 3,000 people overnight, uh, which is across the state, that tells you something about what's happening here. Patrick Allen, the director of the Oregon Health Authority, reported the state stockpile has used up 28 percent of its N95 masks, 83 percent of surgical gowns, and 63 percent of surgical masks. I'm deeply concerned within the next short weeks. We will have providers who need to treat patients without masks, without uh, uh, face shields and, and those kinds of things. That's a, critical, that's a critical problem. Today, the Portland City Council approved the new eviction moratorium for the city and Multnomah County. Renters who can't keep up with payments will get a six-month grace period during the pandemic where they can't be evicted. 
The mayor also says his office is talking with banks and lenders to come up with a solution for landlords, too. Many rely on rent payments from tenants to pay their own expenses. Now to restaurant and bar owners. Many of these small business owners are scrambling to find ways to stay afloat. As Mike Benner shows us, the closures they were forced into may not be uncovered by insurance. Areas that are typically buzzing with activity look more like ghost towns. People, of course, are at home self-isolating and business owners are busy crunching the numbers. A lot of them are going to need financial assistance and they're finding out that may be harder to get than originally thought. What a difference a week makes, or a few days for that matter. The often bustling River Pig Saloon in the Pearl is quiet. Like so many other bars and restaurants across the state, it's closed. Owner Ramsey Hattar says staying open for only carryout just didn't make sense. It would actually cost us more money to stay open to provide just to go orders. Hattar says he laid off the employees at his Portland and Bend locations so they could collect unemployment. He then reached out to his insurance company for some sort of relief for himself. He's hearing that loss caused by a virus or bacteria typically isn't covered. It's more than disheartening. It's more than frustration. Needless to say, Hattar is not a fan of the big insurance carriers. The premiums are really high um, and it doesn't ever seem like they work out for the business owner anyways. Uh, but we have to have them and we have to pay them. Um, but when we actually need them to come through, they always find a way out of it. Not all hope is lost, though. Hattar and other small business owners may qualify for a loan through the U.S. Small Business Administration. A staffer in Oregon Governor Kate Brown's office addressed that during a Wednesday morning conference call. The governor did last night actually finalize the SBA declaration, and it is statewide. So the SBA website, and we're getting some emails about this, is not correct. All counties are eligible. That provides at least some comfort for Ramsey Hattar at a time when any sense of comfort is hard to come by. Right now, digging down and just trying to survive and, and save the business so that we can reopen one day. As you saw right there, we spoke with Hattar over video chat, practicing social distancing ourselves. He says should he not get any help from insurance or loans, he should be able to stay afloat for a couple of months. He worries about those newer businesses that don't have as much in reserves. Reporting in Northwest Portland, I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. Well, we sure are behind all of our business owners. The two members of Congress announced they have tested positive for coronavirus. The first is Mario Diaz-Ballard, a Florida Republican. The other is Ben McAdams, a Democrat from Utah. Both are quarantined and urging people to follow CDC guidelines. Meantime, the Senate approved a second emergency relief bill. It provides some paid sick leave and free virus testing if a doctor deems it necessary. The president signed it into law. While also invoking a wartime power, it will draft American factories into producing critical equipment like protective gear for medical workers. There's never been an instance like this where no matter what you have, it's not enough. Americans could also get two checks from the federal government for financial help as part of a more than one trillion dollar proposed stimulus package. In a bit of good news, Chinese authorities are reporting no new cases of coronavirus today in Wuhan and the Hubei province for the first time since the virus broke out. Both have been an epicenter for the outbreak. The number of new cases across China has been slowly declining. Governor Brown also made a new executive order today instructing all colleges and universities to stop in-person classes and move to online learning only. This will last through April 28th. The order also limits on-campus functions to the essentials, like keeping dining hall and dorm services. With K-12 schools in Oregon and Washington already closed, some districts are getting creative to keep the learning going. In the Estacada School District, elementary school students took home work packets, while the 800 middle and high schoolers got Chromebook laptops for remote learning. They're required to check in with teachers every day. The district also set up hot spots for students who don't have Internet. It's a plan that had been in place for a while now. We've been preparing for this for about a year, actually. We wanted to put it in place um, in inclement weather situations. 
By law, public schools can't go to online classes unless every student has access. For a smaller district like Estacada, it's actually been possible. In addition to distance learning, the district is also making sure hundreds of kids get sack lunches. A Washington company is stepping up its production of ventilators, a piece of medical equipment desperately needed right now. Ventec Life Systems, north of Seattle, has been producing about 150 ventilators a month. In the next 90 days, it is scaling up production to 1,000 ventilators a month. We are going to keep the factory running around the clock. We're in a unique position to really help, and every voxin we get out the door can save someone's life. The ventilators are FDA approved and can run on batteries. Right now, Ventec is one of about five ventilator companies in the U.S. There are only a dozen manufacturers in the entire world. Still ahead, senior shopping hour. More stores are taking action to help the most vulnerable among us deal with coronavirus. It literally was that easy. I just posted on Facebook, like, let's all stick our heads out at five o'clock and just check in and make sure we're doing all right. Love this and keeping their humanity through the outbreak. Neighbors find creative ways to connect and pull together. And a lot of people are ready for a change. You know what? We get a change in seasons tomorrow as spring begins. Tomorrow we'll talk more about that and let you know if spring will begin like this with a lot of sunshine the same way winter is going to end.